At some point in your world, you may find yourself in need of vines, either to craft mossy stone bricks, mossy cobblestone, or to just place the vines themselves within your world. And you may even make a, a nice little temporary farm where you can manually mine up some vines. But this requires manual labor, which is something that I myself would personally like to avoid. So what do you do? Build an AFK vine farm, of course. This particular vine farm is by Techman88. He released a video on it several months ago, and if you haven't seen it, I'll link it down in the description. I highly recommend giving it a watch. And out of all the vine farms on the internet that I've seen thus far, his has to be one of my personal favorites. And the rates of his farm are pretty good in my testing, getting me 2.3 thousand vines per hour. But of course, just by looking at his farm, there is certainly some low-hanging fruit for improvement. One, of course, being uh, compactness. Another one would be improvement of sheer durability usage. So, uh, Techman 88's farm has 95 slices, so I would consider like this right here is a single slice, and then you know two of them would be two slices. So his has 95 slices per shear. Uh, this one, as I've been testing with some, uh, has 115 slices per shear. In order to try and utilize as much of the durability of the shear as possible, without actually breaking the shear itself. A vine farm in this particular configuration yields 3.6 thousand vines per hour. Uh, a definite improvement over Techman 88's end of uh, 2.3 thousand vines per hour. Of course, this is larger and it has more than twice the amount of slices in it than Techman 88's vine farm. Uh, even with that said, I would actually not recommend building a vine farm in this configuration. Primarily to deal with the shear exchange stations. This one in particular has four individual exchange stations and then presumably you'd have to have four individual storages and you'd have to worry about topping off the snowballs and stuff so that way it can knock the item out of the item frame and the shears uh, for each one individually and that's just a mini logistical nightmare. Despite all that, it is very good in shear utilization. There is almost always a vine in front of the player and of when AFK in this thing, meaning very little durability goes to waste. So what's needed to make a vine farm of this size viable is a layout that allows us to have a single shear exchange station with a single storage for it rather than four individual ones. And right here, I have just the answer to that. Rather than spreading the vine farm out over a large flat area, this one instead opts to sack it vertically. And this has a key benefit in that we can easily transport the player up and down. Down is pretty easy, uh, gravity does the work there. And up is also pretty easy thanks to bubble columns which got added in version 1.13. With this, only a single shear exchange station is needed for ex taking the player's damaged pair of shears and providing them with a fresh pair. And this is also where routing happens. So much like in my test vine farm over there, this one has four sort of loops in it. So with each floor being a loop. At the beginning of a loop, and the player is provided a fresh pair of shears and by the end of it, uh, their shears are heavily damaged and they are exchanged where they are given once again a fresh pair of shears and sent on to the next loop. So for example, the player's first time around, they'd end up going around this loop here on the first floor. On their second time around, they'd end up going over this pressure plate, which pulls out one of the blocks in the floor here and the player proceeds to go through the next loop. And of course, this process is continued for each one of the floors slash loops. So this block would get pushed in, this block would get pulled out, and the for the player to get fall down to this floor and mine those vines, and so on and so forth. At which point the process repeats. The redstone behind routing the player through the farm is rather simple and is all just based around this loop of hoppers right here. 
So whenever the player crosses over the pressure plate, the sticky piston extends, pushes the observer forward, which shortly pulses this block. The repeater picks that up and it's set to two ticks, pointed into that block, at which point it depowers the redstone torch, depowers all the redstone here, and a single item within this loop is allowed to advance to the next hopper. And depending on which one of these hoppers currently has an item in it, determines which one of these pistons gets retracted. The rates of this farm are a bit slower in the, than my test farm over there at 3.4 thousand vines per hour. Uh, the reason for this just has to do with the amount of time the player is spending not mining vines. So like in this farm, when the player gets down to like this end, they end up getting pushed over here. And during that time, of course, they're not mining vines. And when they're being routed over here to have their shear exchanged, they're not mining vines. When they're being dropped down to lower levels and being sent back up, of course, they're not mining vines then. Whereas this farm over here, literally instantly when the player turns the cor corner, uh, they're getting their shear replaced. So because of that, it's roughly 200 uh, vines less per hour. Another thing that should be noted about this vine farm is that it uses water streams for item collection rather than hopper lines like Techman 88's vine farm. And of course also uh, my test vine farm over there also uses water streams. Now this does mean that more of the items are lost, but it's not really all that bad with 93% of all vines mined being collected. But alternatively, if you were to go ahead and use hopper lines here rather than water streams, it would actually improve the efficiency by collecting 98% of the items and getting you 3.6 thousand vines per hour with this vine farm. That said, however, I would not recommend using hopper collection. Like in this vine farm right here, we got like 550 hoppers and the majority of those are used for collection. And also, I didn't really spend a lot of time optimizing this collection, so you could probably cut hopper count by a couple here or there and such if you really wanted to, because I literally just put them in place of the water stream here. But yeah, uh, due to the amount of hoppers needed, I would just, I, I would not recommend building the hopper line version of this. The sheer durability utilization of this farm is also, of course, very, very good. So as you can see here, Everything's being run right to the edge. We just like with my test vine farm over there. There is 115 slices uh, per loop per floor of vines and you can see it gets these shears down to About as low of durability as you can before you would end up breaking them and For comparison, this is what the leftover shear durability on Techman 88's vine farm looks like that all said, because this vine farm is pushing things to the edge with the maximum amount of vines and uh, in front of the player that the player can mine without breaking their shear, uh, that does introduce a incompatibility with the haste effect from beacons. So if you happen to have a haste one or a haste two beacon in the area of this particular vine farm, then your shear will break. No doubt about it, it will break because you can mine your vines just ever so slightly faster with haste and that will result in your shears breaking and that can cause uh, problems when AFKing this farm. So if you were to build this farm, make sure it's not around your haste beacons or at least disable your haste beacons before you start AFKing. The process of AFKing this farm is just like how you'd AFK Techman 88's vine farm or a Nimble and Ice farm. So you want to get your shears in your main hand, food in your off hand so you don't starve to death. Uh, as much as you think you could get away with just having a regen beacon in the area, that actually wouldn't work because sometimes uh, when you're kind of like going across like uh, say an ice thing here and you take a wrong tick of damage, you'll end up getting stuck rather than getting picked up by the next uh, piece of water there. So. Always make sure you have food, preferably golden carrots because they give the highest saturation so you won't be eating as often. And of course you want to fill up your inventory with junk, 
uh, so that way you're not picking up any unwanted items. And most importantly too, make sure you're not wearing armor, specifically Depth Strider boots. If you're wearing Depth Strider boots, that's going to mess up your AFK process. All right. So now you need to aim your view as close to straight ahead as possible. You can see your pitch and yaw ends up in the F3 menu, or if you're using uh, the mini HUD mod, then you can have it display on the top left like I do. And then you want to, to hold down left and right click for your AFK session in some manner. Now you could use like tape on your mouse. You could use say, of a tweakaroo mod to hold down these keys for you, or you could use a vanilla technique, and that is F3 plus T. While you're reloading your resource packs with F3 plus T, you let go of your mouse one and mouse two buttons, and you are now off to the races, automatically mining, automatically eating, automatically putting your damage shear into the item frame to get a new one, all that. Another tip, if you want to be able to alt tab out of your game while AFK, so you can go ahead and do other stuff without your game automatically pausing and ruining your AFK session, is to simply use a trick known as F3 plus P. And this will disable the automatic pausing of your Minecraft window when its focus is lost. Here we go, we're getting to the end of this particular loop. Gonna turn this corner here. Go up the bubble, co bubble column, go up the bubble column, and have our shear replaced. And we're off to the races to mine more vines. The storage for this farm is as follows. Right here we got snowball storage, uh, and right beside here we got a snowman, and presumably you'd have your diamond shovel here so you can get snowballs and refill these chests with snowballs. Uh, right beside here we got shulker boxes of shears, so this is where you put your shulker boxes of shears, and then they would be unloaded as needed in order to supply your player with fresh shears. Then right over here we have empty shulker boxes, so these are used to store your vines. Down here is your storage for shulker boxes of vines. And the storage here may actually not look like all that much, but it's actually enough for nearly seven days worth of AFK in this farm. Now obviously you probably wouldn't want to AFK seven days straight, you'd probably run all out of food in your offhand, and uh, actually I'm not sure if there's enough snowball storage for this, but there should at the very least be enough empty shulker box storage, enough shear storage, and enough uh, vine sh shulker boxes of vine storage here uh, for our seven days worth of AFK. And when it comes down to how long you'd AFK at a time, that's pretty much up to you. Um, I've done like overnight AFK tests and I find I eat anywhere from like 12 to 15 uh, golden carrots out of my offhand. So yeah, you could totally AFK this feed for 24 hours straight if you wanted to. And lastly, uh, in case any items get into the collection that are not supposed to, those items go here. And there you have it. This fine farm is effectively ready to build. All you gotta do is figure out what kind of facade you want to build around it. Probably swap the block pallet because white concrete is fairly expensive. And yeah, you're off to the races. But what if I told you this isn't the vine farm you should build. Don't get me wrong, I will in all likelihood be building this within my own single player world. But if you're someone who just needs to get some vines, you don't need the extra rates this provides, is it really worth more than double the build effort for certainly not double the rates? And additionally, uh, this storage for this farm uses a large amount of shulker boxes, not everyone has access to that many shulker boxes. So back to basics. I took the layout of Techman 88's vine farm. So the player will start here, go all the way through the front section, and once they complete that they'll be sent around the back, and then it's just a case of them alternating between the two sections. 
Of course, I am maximizing the amount of slices or the amount of vines that the player can mine with each shear. That does also mean that this vine farm shares its incompatibility with haste beacons in the area of the other vine farms I've been showing. You got everything you need with this farm. Your snowball storage, your snowman for making more snowballs, your shear storage, your storage for all the vines and stuff you mine and collect, enough for uh, about 20 plus hours worth of AFK, way more than you'd ever need. And shear durability usage is also pretty good. As you can see, once the farm gets warmed up, uh, yeah, you're still having quite a bit of, she of your shear durability not get utilized, but I would say a prerequisite to building this farm would be an iron farm. And if you got an iron farm, well, shears cost you nothing. Like, crafting all these shears isn't really going to break the bank. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, no use of shulker boxes here. So this is very friendly to those players who don't have shulker boxes in mass. The complete package getting you 2.5 thousand vines per hour. That's right, only 900 vines per hour slower than that monstrosity over there. But wait, this is the water collection version. What if you used hoppers to collect all the vines? Of which I wouldn't recommend, but hey, if you want to sink all your resources into a bunch of hoppers, then you could expect 2.7 thousand vines per hour. Now, I'm not going to be doing a block by block tutorial on any of the vine farms shown here in this video. Instead, I'm going to do the next best thing. Along with the world download down in the description, there will also be included some light mattocks. One of them is for this vine farm, as you see it here, made out of sewn bricks. And another one will be the same vine farm, but the hopper collection version. So all you need to do to get started on building this in your world, if you didn't want to uh, go back and forth between loading your single player world and this world, is the Lightmatica mod. Once you have the Lightmatics put in your schematics folder, you can press M, go to load schematics, uh, click on the schematic you want to load. So I'm going to go ahead to this one, load it, and then there we go. We can see where it is. Of course, we'll want to move it to where we actually want to build it. So you'd then go to schematic placements, configure. You can move it like to yourself and of uh, left and right click in order to change the position uh, like a so. And beyond the pallet swap here, you can also see that I've made uh, one addition for the lightmatic here. And that is the slabs above the area where the player is going to AFK. And that is to block phantom spawning. Uh, I'm going to assume you're probably going to build this on the surface. So I wanted to make sure that uh, you're not going to get any stupid phantoms coming to ruin your AFK session. And along with that, the light level all throughout here should be pretty darn good. Uh, you got all these torches, uh, so you're not going to get anything spawning within your vine farm itself. Uh, of course, you're going to want to make sure zombies can't just walk in from outside of it and ruin your day, so going to have to do that as well. And also, for your building convenience, vines in this lightmatic are only placed where you need to initially place them. Uh, from there, of course, they'll grow down into position where you can farm them later on AFK. Also, in the lightmatics, I don't have storage for the damaged shears. Instead, uh, I just drop them into a despawn chamber. And the purpose for that is just in case something valuable would happen to go into this hopper here, you don't want to lose it in lava. But hey, uh, if you want to replace this with lava for whatever reason, or you want to collect your damaged shears, then you can go ahead and do that as well. If you're not familiar with the Lightmatica mod, then I would highly recommend taking some time to watch some YouTube tutorials and learn how to use it because it is such a useful mod for some projects. If you're interested in the material list for building this vine farm, you can see it right here. I'll scroll it on down so you can get a good look at it. And this is for the water collection version. And this is the material list for the hopper collection version. 
final considerations when building. Uh, first, the location. I assume you're just going to build it on the surface, but if for whatever reason you're going to build it underground, uh, be aware if you're building below Y40, uh, keep in mind slime chunks and spawn proof appropriately uh, so you're protected from those little green guys. If you happen to be playing a multiplayer server running Spigot or Paper Spigot, be advised that those server administrators could be running any possible combination of configurations and plugins, and that might inadvertently affect this farm. Uh, the worst case scenario I could see is maybe they've done something, maybe they do something that uh, affects vine growth and then you wouldn't get as many vines per hour, possibly, but uh, I would say for the most part this is a farm that should work on just about any server. If you happen to be playing the bedrock edition of the game, uh, I see no reason why a vine farm like this couldn't work. I know if block for block it probably wouldn't work, but I'm also not familiar with all the differences between Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Java Edition, so uh, you're gonna have to do some of your own testing there and come to your own conclusions on what works best for you if you're playing Bedrock Edition. And I'm going to say it one last time. Don't have haste beacons within range of your vine farm, else you will break your shears and you will have a bad time. Well everyone, that is going to be the end of this video. It is at this point I tell you to do the YouTube things, but you already know what they are. So, until next time everyone, whenever that might be, I'll see y'all later. And the channel just surpassed 500 subscribers. Wow. Thank you everyone. Uh, here's to 500 more? Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.